And welcome back to our YouTube Bible study class here at Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'd love to see you in person or in the comments. So if you're watching this live, feel free to comment. If you're watching this a few years after it was originally posted, feel free to comment on YouTube, like, subscribe, share the video with someone that you think would be blessed by watching the video. Uh, today's topic is, again, we're going through the book of Mark, uh, Miracles Around the Lake. We almost finished Mark chapter four last week. We've been just kind of creeping through on this quarter, but right. we're gonna kind of finish off here Mark four and then tip into Mark five. Um, there's some amazing things and, Again, the lesson's title is Miracles Around the Lake, so we're going to be talking a little bit about the Sea of Galilee. But before we dive into the lesson, Pastor, could you pray for us and I'll be open glad our to. lesson? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege once again to study your word. We invite your Holy Spirit to be our teacher. We thank you again for all those who are watching. We ask your blessing upon them and their family members. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so our lesson uh, verse, memory text for this week is... Mark 5:19. It says, "However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, "Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and Amen. how He has had compassion on you." All righty, so here we go, Galilee. Uh, you've been to Galilee. I've been to Galilee. Tell me a little bit about Galilee. It is an amazing region. Um, it has this big, big lake or body of water. Um, and it's also, I believe, it's not salty water, but it's 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 good Just water to drink. Standard fresh water. Standard <laughs> fresh water. Thank you. And yes, and it's 600 feet below sea level. Wow. So it can okay. get very hot. Wow. Okay. And humid because it's like this bowl huh, down there. Yes. So it's uncomfortable to be outdoors. Not 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 the most. Um, yeah. It's it, it, but it has some really nice hills around it. You can walk, and, and today um, they grow banana trees there, so that's a big region for bananas. It feels tropical, though. It feels tropical, exactly. So, give you a size in case you've never been to that area. It's approximately 13 miles long and 8 miles wide. So, it would take you a while if you took a canoe and started mm -hmm. across. Um, just like, I always think that like, if we cross the Chesapeake Bay here in Maryland, you know, that would take a lot of a morning if you were just to kayak it or That's canoe right. it. But this is eight miles wide. So if you're gonna take the short section, eight miles it's wide. Um, and that's why you have these, these, some of these stories about the disciples crossing and it just, it takes a while. It's not something that goes by really quick. Now, of course, now you have motors and different things like that to get expedite that, but we're talking Jesus time. All mm -hmm. right, so we just finished, uh, we're just finishing up Mark four. Let's go ahead and, and start in verse 35 and kind of go back and forth and we'll okay. go to verse 41. It says, on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hmm. Uh, this is um, another one of those um, Sea of Galilee situations where it's stormy. It seems like it wasn't always the most calm ride across. And at eight miles wide, 13 miles long, uh, winds coming down the hillsides. That's right. Uh, you can kind of and see. And cooler, yeah. winds. Uh, so you can see how, and we don't know what time of year this was as well. But even um, nature just listens to his voice instantly. Mm -hmm. That's that's what strikes me about this um, initially. Like there's there's a lot of elements in this and um, but 
when you're in a bad storm I know this week we had a mm -hmm. pretty strong storm can't come through our area yeah, and the yeah, trees yeah. were just going and uh, <laughs> we were having worship with the baby and um, I was like hold on uh, phone's out in the hallway I'm gonna go grab my phone I just want to make sure that <laughs> there's not a tornado watch because the trees were just going like this mm -hmm. and we're up on the top floor and we, <laughs> if we need to go to the basement if there's an issue um, but um, incidentally we while it was heavy, we we sang the song the rains came down and the floods the came, came up, up. <laughs> so I, I think it was uh, our daughter's first time really experiencing rain because right after supper we were on the porch and it started to sprinkle and she was kind of like what is this and kind of seeing it land on her and then there was the hose I had been washing the porch uh, with the pressure washer a couple of weeks ago and the hose was still there and there was water accumulating on it so she's just like trying to taste it and stuff like that it was a really cool experience but um we have um situations especially in this area this time of year late summer mm -hmm. where you get these pretty tumultuous thunderstorms that come through the area right. and they'll take out a few trees and um occasionally there's even been like light tornadoes and mm -hmm. it hasn't thankfully done too much damage but it will clear the tops of trees or knock out certain sections here in Colombia even but that amazing aspect of when human nature is extremely fearful mm -hmm. in these situations that here it's even 10 times worse because you're in an open area of water and right. you get too much water in the boat and the boat sinks. sinks. Jesus is asleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's as calm as you can get. Um, <laughs> can I go back on uh, a little story of my daughter? Uh, Fourth of July, we're like, hey, um, let us go book a hotel near the where they're going to do fireworks this year and so we got it for um july 4 and i just booked it with points it's all going to work out well we got there and everything well her bedtime was at 7 30 so she was yeah. out by 7 30 7 45 and um so the hope was she was going to wake up at like 9, 9.30 when the fireworks went off. She didn't. So I sat in the room and <laughs> could kind of see the reflections. I, we didn't have a perfect view, but I could see some of the fireworks, like half the show. You know, if it was split, the part of the building was in the way. And it was loud bangs and crashes and everything. She and I asleep. kept looking at the baby monitor and she was like asleep as anything. And I was like, man, a few days ago was the first time that she heard thunder. And she didn't seem as scared of it, but she was just like, huh, what was that? So thinking back to that story, when there's crashing sounds and when there's all sorts of things, Jesus was just asleep. Mm -hmm. But there's something to be said about that, because like the Adventist pioneers, when they were out... Um, on their sermon mm -hmm. routes Circuit. and mm -hmm. at circuits and going to preach at different areas. Uh, I know there was situations where like they were in a steamship and there was tumultuous um, huge waves and everything like that and the, some of the passengers were screaming and thinking they were going to die and um, Ellen White, she's there and she's very cool and collected and just that perspective that if something bad happens, it's okay. I have nothing to lose that separates me mm -hmm. between me and God. And if today's the day I go, everything's going to yeah, be gonna okay. okay. How do we get in that spirit? It's interesting because what Mark seems to be doing is um, once again trying to answer a question, but subtly who Jesus is. He doesn't answer it quite um, so um, explicitly. He just kind of presents Jesus again as this teacher. That's how they have the, the disciples call him. And they're in a 
rut. They know this boat is sinking because it's getting water and, and they are thinking this is it. We're dead. Um, and Jesus is calmly asleep and when he does get up, this is where once again you, you see this contrast between humanity mm -hmm. and facing um, affliction, when facing stress, when facing um, difficult moments, we tend to react negatively in the sense of, wow, it's over. Yeah. That's our first thought is like, it's over. We're, gonna, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> yes, first thought, you know, the worst case scenario. But Jesus, on the other hand, kind of goes, hmm, let's just solve this right now. And, and he's presented as this one, this one person who can speak to sea, wind, storm, and he can bring a great calm. Hmm. Uh, there's a quote uh, from the book In Heavenly Places that says, There is no nature so rebellious that Christ cannot subdue it. Amen. No temper so stormy that he cannot quell it. If the heart is surrendered to his keeping, he who commits his soul to Jesus need not despond. Amen. We have an all-powerful Savior looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You can say, God is our refuge Amen. and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Mm -hmm. With quotes like that, um, I also mm -hmm. like to think back to Psalms 91. Okay. Uh, could you read, just start sure. reading the, in the, just the first portion of that? Psalm 91. There's, there's times in our lives when we are faced with trauma, mm -hmm. with storms, mm -hmm. with troubled times, yes. but we can go back to the Psalms, we can go back to the Gospels, we can go back to certain uh, portions of Scripture mm -hmm. that can be of comfort, and it's, it's a good thing to memorize them now because maybe you'll be on a boat and you won't have your Bible with That's you, right. like here in the, the Disciples, they weren't, uh, didn't have the the scrolls of, of psalms to read to comfort them. That was the last thing on their mind. But when you have that in your memory, um, it can come to you as comfort during tumultuous times. Just read a couple verses here of Psalms 91. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Yeah, and if you get a chance, go ahead and read through that whole mm -hmm. chapter. It's like one of those really comforting things that... Um, I know you've had troubled times in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, there's troubled times coming in the future. You can just look at the news or don't because it's going to add that straight stress to you and mm -hmm. uh, raise your blood pressure. Uh, but someday, um, when you find yourself in those trials and, and temptations, mm -hmm. uh, think back to how God has led you before and Amen. how He will lead you through whatever storm you're going through. Amen. Uh, Psalms 104, lesson also uh, brought up uh, this beautiful picture uh, of Yahweh. Uh, and we'll, we'll read kind of here verses 1 through 9. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Who cover yourself with light as with a garment. Who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters who makes the cloud his chariot, who walks on the wing, wings of the wind. Who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment, the water stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled, at the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up over the mountains, they went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. 
you have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. Uh, when, you, when you see this, you really get a picture of how God is in control of everything. Uh, you see kind of this painted in, in Job as well. Mm -hmm. uh, all the different things that God is very much connected with and in control of. Mm -hmm. And when we see this, then we can realize that peace be still makes complete sense because God is in charge of everything. And that's why Jesus could take a nap during the strongest of storms. That's right. And I, I like what the psalmist basically invites us to do is to look at God as someone who is in control of light, he's in control of water, he's in control of wind, all these elements that somehow do affect us, sometimes in positive ways, sometimes in negative ways, um, but he's still in control, even though sometimes chaos seems to be all around us. Mark 5 verses 1 through 20. Mm -hmm. um, we have moved on to the next chapter. It just kind of rolls over because, I mean, Mark 1 goes like, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the co country of the Gadarenes. And another storm comes in. But this time it's a spiritual one. Yeah, it's so different. <laughs> um, you know, I think after that, uh, the disciples were still decompressing. They were. Because right. they effectively had that fight or flight, and they were all at the stress point that we're going to die, and here we here we here we go so they're getting over this miracle that Jesus had just quieted everything they land you know they're getting probably getting ready for breakfast or something and verse 2 when he had come out of the boat immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him not even with chains because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him. And the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. So this is a very troubled individual. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of self-harm going on. Mm -hmm. um, uncontainable anguish anguish uh, he's also abiding with death basically mm -hmm. you know That's right. running around the tombs and I feel like some of these things you can see in the culture of today mm -hmm. uh, certain uh, uh, infatuation with um, darkness darkness the death and dying aspect mm -hmm. of um, like the de demonic aspects. Demonic as well. So uh, demons like to um, kind of go along with that whole death mm -hmm. uh, perspective. And you'll see the, the artwork in various forms of all the skulls and crossbones and different things like that. And then you have also the modern version of the self-harming in right. various ways. Right. And um, this individual um, is not doing well. Not doing well, but he also knew Jesus Amen. somehow. Because um, in verse 6 it says, When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. So it's kind of weird because mm -hmm. this person who just does not go with society he saw through it. His humanity pulled out from the demons enough to come and worship. Um, but there's also the aspect that every in the future, uh, every knee will bow and acknowledge Jesus. So part of it also could have been the demons bowing down as well and acknowledging God the, the Creator. creator. But in verse 7, he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? That's Jesus asking. And he answered him, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. 
Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. It's just really a uh, different perspective mm-hmm. because it's Jesus communicating with the demonic world as well. And it's a picture, a mini of, picture of this um, great controversy theme as yeah. well. And it started, instead of being all supernatural and in the behind the curtain, mm-hmm. this is starting to come out from the curtain. That's right. Uh, the demons are acknowledging Christ, but um, it's interesting because Jesus even had mercy on the demon's request, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is really weird. Um, he could have just banished them off mm-hmm. into the wherever, but he granted them the request and that was going into the swine, you know. So the demons begged him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter hmm. them. Now, I mean, there you could get into the, the Jewish purity things about how swine isn't good to, mm-hmm. to eat and it's, it's, it's an unclean thing. So is it hitting two birds with one stone? <laughs> because not only are you casting out the demons, but you're taking away the, this food source. Um, but... Uh, all that to say that Jesus gives a permission in verse 13 and they entered into the swine and the crazy thing is it wasn't just you know a handful this was like 2,000 ish swine and they just go and dive into the ocean so why that because like that ends up being in the following verses kind of bad PR for their Mm -hmm. their entrance Um, Jesus arrives Yes, he, do you know when like somebody solves a problem and it creates a bigger problem? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, whether it's a PR disaster or just like, you know, if we had done it this way instead of the way they did it, we wouldn't have to fix all these other issues. Mm-hmm. But it seems like there's a purpose through all this. There is, and, and what's interesting is that, as you mentioned, we have the disciples facing their first storm, a physical one, on mm. the Lake of Galilee. Yeah. A second storm, it has to do with spiritual demonic agencies basically taking hold of this man and, and bringing him down and Jesus is there to bring him up and get him out of his their situation of his situation and then you still have this you could say a financial crisis mm. where this business whole economy for the oh, area it sinks yeah all of a sudden Yet Jesus, I think what he's pointing out to is that we can lose things. We can lose a boat. We, we can even lose um, a, a person, um, seeing them you know, leave the path and, and, and go down a, a wrong road. We can even lose financially. Yeah. But Jesus seems to be there. He's yeah. not far. He's not distant. He's not... Someone who doesn't care. In fact, that's what comes up again and again. He cares. He cares about <clears throat> our, our safety. He cares about those even who have left the faith. Yeah. Um, he cares also about, you know, people's livelihood. And he is there in those difficult moments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's just crazy that there's so many different side stories going on to this whole thing that's right so you have the the beautiful interaction going on between jesus and this man who wants freedom from Amen. the hundreds of demons mm-hmm. uh, legion what's the number of le- for legion a legion if i remember correctly is a unit of about six thousand soldiers okay yes so that's a lot of of demons here. Yes. So easily 2,000 pigs taken over by the three to 6,000 ish. Correct. Whatever uh, legion of, of demons. So you have this whole interaction going on. Then you have the whole disciples' whole situation in relation to this, mm-hmm. observing what's happening. And I'm sure that there was the, oh, master, run away from this guy. But then Jesus kind of lets it happen. Mm-hmm. And. Then you have the interaction of the farmers coming afterwards. And what's, what's, what happened with the farmers then? The so the farmers, farmers are upset. They are upset. They are like, mm, please leave. Leave our town. This is not good for us. Even though we do see that this man has been changed, transformed. Yeah, they see him that he's like yes. calm and dressed his right mind. The whole uh-huh. nine yards, he's, he's perfect. But 
that doesn't influence again the whole business portion of what had Correct. gone on. And, and maybe something that 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 just just kind of was thinking about as as we're <coughs> studying this this text, it's the uh, disadvantage that a human being has against demonic forces. I mean, this is not a one to one, and even then it would be difficult, but you know, thousands of demons going after one person. Yeah. And this is where Jesus, again, is the only one who can help us yeah. overcome. And, and, and it presents it in a, in a truly, uh, uh, like a, a war kind of scenario. I mean, they're called legion for a reason, too. Yeah. They're fighting with everything they have to keep people from knowing Jesus. And yet, Jesus was looking for them. And yeah. so he found this man who needed help. So verse 17, and they began to plead with him to depart from the region. So it's, it's really weird because everyone has been, uh, up to this point you see all the people mm -hmm. flocking to Jesus, but here's a situation where these individuals are pleading him to just, just leave, please, please leave. And so did he? He got right back in the boat. And what he happens? Did. The guy wants to come with him. Mm -hmm. But... That's our memory In text. In spite of that begging. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not permit him, yeah. but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Amen. So if you ever thought, oh man, I am totally unqualified to spread the gospel. Hmm. I need to go to seminary. I hmm. need to go do some more Bible courses hmm. and master classes in giving Bible studies, etc. This whole interaction could have been minutes. That's right. Uh, maybe even at, the, at most a couple hours. But here you have an incredible missionary left behind. I mean, there's no um, more powerful message than seeing someone transformed by the gospel. Yeah. That, that, that just speaks volumes, and, and there's nothing you can say against that. Yeah. I mean, you can say something against you know, someone speaking about what they believe to be true, but when you see it, and you see the change in that person, you go like, wow, powerful. Uh, there's a great quote from the Ministry of Healing that says, Though the people of Gergesa had not received Jesus, he did not leave them to the darkness they had chosen. Amen. When they bade him depart from them, they had not heard his words. Hmm. They were ignorant of that which they were rejecting. Therefore, he sent the light to them, and by those to whom they would not refuse to listen. In causing the destruction of the swine, it was Satan's purpose to turn the people away from the Savior and prevent the preaching of the gospel in that region. Hmm. But this very occurrence roused the country as nothing else could have done and directed attention to Christ. Though the Savior himself departed, the men whom he had healed remained as witnesses to his power. Those who had been mediums of the Prince of Darkness became channels of light messengers of the Son of God. When Jesus returned to Decapolis, people flocked about him, and for three days, thousands from all the surrounding country heard the message of salvation. Amen. So this is another thing where humanity can look at the macro, mm -hmm. but God is looking at the oh, huge picture. picture. Um, and it doesn't matter if we are focused on, oh no, why now, or why this, or why can't I go with you and your disciples now? No, Jesus had the long-term picture, and later you have such a, a beautiful mission experience. And mm -hmm. I, I like to think that Jesus was able to reconnect with um, uh, the one who had been healed, mm -hmm. because, um, and you know he was there bringing all his friends, Amen. And who had who had told, hey, this is what the Lord has done. And then, 
it brought so much anticipation that when Jesus came back shortly later, uh, there was there was a, a great harvest. Amen. And, and this is again evidence of, of Jesus' love, compassion for humanity. He's he's basically working in a region that is not well seen, um, probably economically a little more distressed than Jerusalem and other parts of the country. Um, they're <coughs> dedicated to what they do. These 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 townspeople. But yet, um, as we can see, they're far from God. Um, and, and yet, you see God's love once again reaching out to them. And even though at first they reject Jesus without even hearing him out, um, God doesn't take that against them. And he says, okay, not ready? I'll come back again. I'll leave my, my friend here so he can share what I did for him. And, and you might want to hear me next. And that's exactly what happened. So in the theme of Mark, he moves on through the story very quickly. Verse 21, mm -hmm. uh, now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side. So like they had all this experience to go to that side and then they had to leave Turn again around. and go all the way back over to the other side. Of course, there's a great multitude gathered uh, mm -hmm. to him and he was by the sea. So remember when he was headed over, you know, Typically, there's there's a stream of other boats that kind of go with them. Correct. And so, like, then he just comes back, and then everyone's there, ready already. And I'm sure there were runners that went out and told everyone that oh, Jesus man. was coming again. Yes. Um, and, and here here we go. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, "My little daughter lies at the point of death." Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. Hmm. So Jesus went with him, and the great multitude followed him and thronged him. Um, and then you know where this story is going, and we'll get... But, like, so many things are happening so quickly. I'm sure there were, there were standard days of just, you know, healings and different things like this. But I feel like Mark really wants to portray this because there were so many... There were peak moments in Jesus' yeah, ministry, and this is like one of them where things are happening so rapid fire, and it's just really incredible. And this is another one of those storms that can hit us human beings. Um, this is not spiritual. This is actually physical in nature, and it's hitting us where we hurt the most um, in our own health. And I can imagine a father um, who's losing his daughter. Mm. And he's desperate to yeah. do whatever it takes to get her back. And I, I like how you've been pulling out that there's the physical challenges, then there's the mental and spiritual mm -hmm. and, and metaphysical challenges that are going on. Um, and then we hit this other challenge. So, like, you thought that was, like, We've had peak over here, and then it's like we're getting into a situation where Jesus is, is on his way to help this individual here. And it says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 hmm. years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. Hmm. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Hmm. Uh, just to dwell on that momentarily. Yes. You can relate to that yes. in this day and age. You get, you go to the doctor for something small. You have to run a bunch of tests. Um, insurance isn't going to cover everything. If even if you have insurance, you, you might be stuck paying like twenty percent of. And if the procedure is like six thousand dollars or some of the, you know, it. But you think of somebody, um, and there's many cases where people don't really know what they have and they're going from doctor to doctor and you may uh, when I was a kid growing up uh, I didn't know that I had like ankylosing spondylitis that I was dealing with and it was this rheumatoid it's a type of rheumatoid arthritis but you know we started at the the local uh, clinic for a pediatric clinic in, in Berrien Springs 
And then from there, we went to uh, um, maybe ran some tests in Stevensville or St. Joe. And then from there, we went to Kalamazoo. And then they had to run some imaging. And um, then from there, the University of Michigan. You know, and so you, you go, go through these progresses, and then finally you find uh, an expert who understands the pediatric aspects of arthritis and different things like that and can correctly diagnose you. All that to say that everyone, when they're struggling with a pretty serious health issue, has a very long journey. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that solves overnight. It could be a cancer situation. It could be um, an arthritis situation, Crohn's, whatever. These various different things. Uh, even a car accident or mm -hmm. some injury, um, long-term road to recovery. Uh, all these different things. Uh, but this woman, um, whether she had insurance or not, or however it worked, she had been to many people. Uh, I'm sure she had dealt with um, individuals trying to sell those cure-alls. And um, you see that today where they'll, if you get this, it'll help you with this and that and the other thing. And then whatever it was, hmm. she had gotten worse. Um, and verse 27 says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind them in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And that is the premise of why her situation was successful. Mm -hmm. um, she had already made up her mind ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And if I can just get there and touch uh, just the hem of his, his garment, I'm good to go. And that's some serious faith. Looks like the solution again is come to Jesus, be close to Him. Yeah. And, and things change in your life for the better. They change for the better. And you imagine um, somebody who's dealt with a medical condition for, you know, over 10 years. Mm. Um, I'm sure they did not smell very well mm -hmm. and how the crowd reacted to that and different things like that. Whatever the case, she was instantly healed and in verse 29, it, everything was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Amen. So of course she's probably just going to slip, slip out of there, but verse 30 says, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude, multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? It's kind of like incredulous. Like, yes. <laughs> um, you've been in a situation, it could have been a sports event, you've been a, could have been in a protest, I don't know, a big, uh, where there's thousands of people. Um, and when you kind of get jam-packed in there, uh, it, and then it's you said, "Who touched to me?" It's like uh, think of subways in yes, New York that's right. or in, Mexico or City, you, <laughs> India, where people are hanging out the yes. side of the bus between stops. Uh, but he looks around to see her who had done this thing. It says, "But the woman feared and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth." Mm -hmm. And there's no judgment. No judgment. Jesus says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Beautiful. Yes. He's like, there's nothing. He's like, you know, your faith. And that's the real thing because it just confirms from, from going to Jesus and touching. If only I can touch, I will be healed. Mm -hmm. um, that's the faith that saved her. Beautiful. So, we're not done with the Jairus story, though. We're that, not. Was just a, that was just a side, <laughs> a that side just story. Side story. Um, so they they arrive at, at Jairus's house, but the situation has gotten worse. Correct. So um, by now she's dead. And and, um, and they're basically telling Jairus why trouble the teacher any further. And Jesus understands the concern, but he's mm -hmm. like, do not be afraid, only believe. And I don't know what whoever was thinking, but mm -hmm. they continued on. They it's did. just like, what does this do not be afraid, only believe mean? And 
it's interesting because he only allows a couple of the disciples to go with him. That's right. Three, and Peter, James, and John. They come into the house and, um, of course, being dead, they've already hired the mourners. He's, he's uh, pretty well-to-do probably. And um, if you were well-to-do, you could spend uh, good money on a correct burial and everything. And That's right. With that whole process, there's the aspect of the wailing. It's kind of traditional. Mm -hmm. So you have the wailers or probably people playing some type of instruments, different things like that, whatever it was. Um, he walks in, says, why are you making this commotion mm -hmm. and weeping? A child is not dead but sleeping. And then, of course, you have the humanity popping up in, in everyone is what they're kind of just ridiculing him. Don't be stupid here. It's, this is, you're going to make this worse. Like, let, right. let, let's just do the process here. And, but somehow he got the upper hand and mm -hmm. sends everybody out. And I'm sure there was a lot of people talking and frustrated. And I cannot imagine the death stares and all the the tension between the family members and different things like that. It just, that we don't see between the lines mm -hmm. here, but you think of situations where someone takes the upper hand, people don't like it. And mm -hmm. anyway, everything's calm inside. He takes the child by her hand and says, Talitha Kumi, which is translated, little girl, I say to you arise. That's right. Immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age and they were overcome with great amazement. Uh, wow. Yeah. I mean, a little girl, truly. One story before, a lady who had had this issue um, for 12 years, a young girl at age 12 basically loses her life, and yet Jesus is there. He's there in all those situations where we think no one else understands, no one else cares, no one can do anything about it. Jesus is there. He's present. And yeah. he's able to do things that no one would ever think possible. And in spite of that, there's still a lot of unbelief. There um, is. Even from his hometown, mm -hmm. which uh, there's a text about, you know, no prophet is really accepted in his home. Mm -hmm. uh, home space <laughs> to put it modern uh, but it kind of goes well it, it, you kind of see that today as well you do people know all of your background or they think they know and they may not listen to you as much or whatever the case but Jesus is going and I cannot imagine the ride of emotions that mm. especially those three disciples had oh, man. Uh, because they amazing. saw the whole thing um, that all the other disciples saw the majority of everything but they saw an additional mm -hmm. uh, small portion which is raising back from the dead which is pretty incredible. It's incredible, and, and I, I, would, I would like to make the connection again against for, uh, with these three stories, these last three stories where you have a person who's spiritually dead, a person who basically is physically dead. There's no hope, and they're 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 coming, and and then this little girl who is literally dead, yeah. you know, and and Jesus has the power to bring her back to life, yeah. and and that's what He wants to give us all. He wants to give us life in abundance, and healing, and He wants to give us spiritual healing, which is. Something that gives us peace and so much more. Um, we didn't really get to touch on Mark 6 much today. Okay. Uh, maybe we will in upcoming mm -hmm. lessons. Uh, we can reference back to this. But one thing I want to mm -hmm. share from is verse uh, 34 of chapter 6. It says, And Jesus, when he came out, he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. Mm. So he began to teach them many things. Mm. And this is what you continue to see in his ministry. Jesus may have paused to speak with his father, you know, waking up a great, day, uh, great while before day to pray, different things like this. But he's always returning because that compassion is pulling him to reach these people and mm -hmm. just 
feeling so sorry for these these individuals like they are looking uh, they are searching and he was there to teach them um, if you have any questions feel free to um, leave them in the chat or email pastor at tridelphiachurch.org um, this is all we have time for today but let us know if you have any prayer requests. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of challenges and different things going on in, in our lives That's right. and in our churches, yes. the heart of our church even right now. Mm -hmm. um, but we also see how God is working in our lives Amen. and in this church. And we would like you to be a part of that. And there's no prayer request that is too small too simple and we That's would right. be happy to add it Amen. to our prairie list yes. um, these disciples were dealing with a lot even though they were disciples and later you know that apostle um, token they were they were carrying with them um, they still needed prayer and Jesus was praying for them throughout his ministry and Amen. we would like to pray for you Amen. Uh, let's close with prayer now and then uh, yeah, Pastor, would you like to close? To. Yes, right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this beautiful lesson that we had this week. We thank you for inviting us once again to trust you because you are a God who is compassionate and caring and can actually do something about our situation. And even in the midst of difficulties and challenges and where everything seems to be going downhill, um, in those moments you're able to bring something good out of something so tragic and mm -hmm. so sad and we thank you again for the work that you're doing in each one of our hearts today in spite of um, the challenges that we might all be facing so we ask your blessing and we ask above all for that peace that is needed to um, continue to persevere in, in our faith and what you are doing so we thank you and we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Take care, and happy Sabbath.